Good morning, dear friends. I'm here. It's maybe 7 in the morning or 6.30 in the morning. And I wanted to talk to you about healing depression through the plant-based diet and getting rid of inflammation. So I've been doing research on inflammation and how it affects people who have depression. And you know, during this day, and during this day, you know, this time and age of Corona, people are becoming more depressed than ever. And I think it's this is really an epidemic that's been going on for for decades. People becoming depressed, and you know, I believe there's a lot of factors to this. And I want to talk about this because I've gone through depression myself, and this is why I'm such a big. This is why I'm so big into health food, into veganism, into yoga, into being in the nature daily. I found for myself that you have to create a routine for yourself. You have to create a discipline for yourself. I'm out here in the beautiful nature. There's kangaroos in the background. I don't know if you can see them. I don't know if my umbrella is blocking them. But there are kangaroos in the background here today. And I just wanted to say to you, the first thing is our diet. So, you know, we look at the aboriginals and we look at the Native Americans. These ancient people, these indigenous people never had depression. They were in the best shape of their life, almost at least. And they never exercised and they had community. They weren't competitive. Everybody was important to the tribe, to the community. And I think that is part of our problem here in society, that first of all, we don't have community. Everybody is for themselves. So we have that other element of competition. We are taught when we're little, me number one, which means when you're number one, that means it's at the expense of somebody else, meaning we don't want someone to be better than us. We always want to be the best, which, we want, which means we are laughing when someone is not the best, when they're not perfect. So these are all things I've been, you know, figuring out myself. So we have that, but we don't have that community. We don't have that support network of people to count on that we can really be ourselves and express that aren't entrenched in the matrix and the status quo, you know, that aren't telling you, well, you should do this, you should do that. You know, instead looking at what is actually the root of the problem. How did it happen in the first place? So the next thing I want to talk about is that the indigenous people were very fit and they weren't exercising, you know. They were going out, they were outside doing exercise without realizing it for four hours a day, getting their food, living out in the nature. And you know what, now we live a very sedentary lifestyle. We sit most of the day, whether you're at home, you know, on a computer, working from home, or whether you're watching a TV, you know, and when you get home from work, you're watching Netflix or watching movies or watching YouTube. So we're at home, we're sitting down and sitting down is killing us. It's killing our spine. It's killing our whole structure of being, of being inside all the time where we're not getting fresh air. We're not hearing the birds. We're not seeing all the nature. Look at the kangaroo is still there right behind me. So we are not in touch with nature, we're not getting enough exercise, you know. The Aboriginal people, the Native Americans, if you look at it, their lifestyle was about four to five hours of exercise a day. They looked like athletes and they weren't exercising like we are. So I think our sedentary lifestyle, well, it's not benefiting us. We're not in the best shape of our life, which it's not all about the body. We are not the body. But in order to feel the best we can, it's wonderful to take care of the body as a temple, as a medium to access more spiritual realms, to access more happiness if you don't believe in spirituality. So I believe we need to start going out and exercising daily, and especially people with depression, people with schizophrenia, people with paranoia, you know, people with chronic disorders. Exercise is a medicine. The brain is getting energy from the nature, from being outside, from moving the body, the blood circulating. So I'm going to the nature every day, even if it means I'm just stepping out of my house and walking by in the park where I live, or walking, just taking a walk in my neighborhood. 
because I really believe as we're increasing the blood circulation and we're walking, the easiest exercise on the planet, if, if you have two legs, then it's getting the heart rate up and the heart rate is strengthening the heart muscles. So the next thing is the diet, you know, eating plant-based has more antioxidants. Antioxidants fight free radicals. So free radicals are basically they're attaching to electrons or neutral or you know the well I don't know how to say it completely, but they're attaching when an electron is lost in the nucleus. And how is this lost? This is lost by eating processed food, by eating meat, by eating foods that have high fructose corn syrup. That when you look at the back of the box, there are so many ingredients you don't actually even know what they are. Processed foods, easy, convenient foods that actually deteriorate your health, that actually destroy neurotransmitters, that actually do not give the brain the food it needs, that it's not giving the brain the nutrition it needs to operate optimally. And then you have depression, and then you have paranoia, then you have psychiatric mental disorders and chronic diseases. And so there's been a lot of debate about inflammation. Is inflammation what's causing psychiatric disorders? And I have to say, I believe yes. I believe it's part of the problem. I think there's a lot of elements. I think the element of people go to the doctor and the doctor refers you to the psychiatrist and to the psychotherapist and then they're giving you that prescription, that prescription for these pills that have side effects. They do have side effects and they don't actually remove the problem. It's a temporary band-aid on the problem. So people can go through their life and I'm all for it if it helps you. I'm not criticizing medication, but what I'm saying is it's only a temporary problem and it's not part of the whole package of healing the actual root of the problem. So in this day and age, people just want to deal with the symptom but we don't want to go to the root of why that is there and how to heal that. And so I'm looking at a holistic approach in the sense that we need to look at creating a discipline. We need to look at creating a routine that's something that you're doing every day in combination with the medication if you need it. I'm not personally for medication, but I understand if it helps you and it changes the symptoms that it makes it possible for you to function in life, I understand. But I'm here to promote the alternative to medication, to weaning off medication. And I'm here to prescribe to you, and I'm not a doctor, but just through my own experience as someone who's taken it into her hands to work on healing herself. And I am a work in progress. I'm not healed completely. This is why I go to the nature every day. I'm just looking back at the kangaroo. I wish I could show you. I don't know if you can see it. I apologize. I'm not a film editor. But if we can exercise daily, that's number one, that we need to go outside of the house, to get outside of the four walls and get fresh air. We need to know what's going on outside of our house. So we go out, we get a walk, and if you can, on your phone, you download Pedometer. Pedometer is you can download pedom an, a pedometer app on your iPhone or on your Samsung to measure how many steps a day are you doing. The best is to start at 10,000 steps a day, which is mainly about half hour, one hour of walking a day. I recommend, I recommend, especially for people with depression or hearing voices or any kind of chronic disease, if you can, walking one hour a day outside, not on a treadmill, but actually going outside, breathing in air, breathing, getting that energy from the trees. You're exchanging the energy, looking up at the clouds, seeing the sun. This is very regenerating to the body. So the next thing that I recommend is also the diet. To transition to a plant-based diet, processed foods do not give any nutrition to the brain and it only serves to increase inflammation and inflammation is almost at the root of all chronic diseases inflammation you can go to out you know look at alzheimer's look at heart disease which is clogged arteries 
you can look at diabetes. These are all inflammation related diseases, IBS, stomach problems, all inflammation. And now mental illnesses that nobody has been really talking about is also affected by inflammation. It's not the sole cause, but there is a trigger of inflammation and inflammation is really caused by the wrong diet, by eating fast food. Fast food with a lot of chemicals and, and nutrient deficient food and as well processed food, meat which has so many hormones and antibiotics added into it. This is all food that is not giving your brain the nutrition it needs. Now when you eat plant-based foods, that's fruits, vegetables, grains, nuts and seeds. These foods have minerals, they have vitamins, they have antioxidants galore. So this is, this is giving your brain that supercharge that you need to also start that detox from getting rid of all that junk food that is actually depleting your brain and depleting your system. So I would urge you, if you're not ready, because I know it's a very big step to take and I know a lot of people say I like my meat. I understand because I used to eat meat as well. But when you actually say, I, you know, I want to change and I want to take charge of this, I want to know is there an alternative, alternative besides taking the medication, well then we can start to put these things into place where, okay, you're taking your medication, but you're adding your daily walk every day. If you have a bicycle, getting on the bicycle every day and you can download a cyclometer app on your phone to measure well how far did you go how many how, how much time did you go did you do how far did you do an hour how many kilometers or miles did you do today so you can start to keep track just on your phone of how much are you exercising daily because you know if you're eating food you also need to be breaking it down and breaking it down means exercising burning it off to have that blood stimulation going, that blood circulation going. The next component I would say is to have at least one raw food meal a day. Raw meaning raw vegan, meaning have either some fruits a day. You know I'm the green smoothie lady. So I recommend a green smoothie first thing in the morning or first thing for lunch instead of eggs and bacon and cheese and bread i recommend a green smoothie greens like kale and spinach are nutrient dense they have so much nutrition for the brain the bananas have the potassium blueberries help the memory and really are incredible for people who have depression this is almost a necessity to have blueberries daily spinach banana blueberries the dates add the natural sweetener without all the chemicals you know and then having a plant-based milk like almond milk or coconut milk there you go you have a very simple smoothie comprised of kale banana dates blueberries